ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid, and this is another edition of your show, Let's Talk About It, live on Islam QA, Islam Question and Answer Television. It's a, a new channel where you uh, can watch uh, many shows beside this live show and other shows uh, as well uh, coming to you live from uh, Il Minhal Academy actually uh, in the state of New Jersey insha'Allah uh, my dear viewers brothers and sisters in Islam I'm here to take your calls that's the first uh, step uh, towards uh, contributing to the show uh, you call us with your questions, your comments, your suggestions, uh, even recommendations. Uh, we will take that as well. The phone number is 1-800-587-9075. It's shown on the screen as we speak. 1-800-587-9075. Nine zero seven five. Again, one eight hundred five eight seven nine zero seven five. You can also reach us through Facebook page uh, www.facebooks.com slash slam qa tv. That is the Facebook page. Uh, you can also uh, send emails. Um, uh, to Kareem at Huda.tv, uh, Kareem at uh, IslamQA.tv. Uh, it's, it's either uh, one of these, inshallah. And we do have some bending questions from emails. Uh, we'll try to answer those ta'ala as we wait uh, for your phone calls. Uh, ta'ala. But before I uh, explore the uh, uh, the question that we have uh, from a sister uh, Fadia uh, she sent these questions actually a while back and we have been slacking and getting back to her uh, even uh, though we made the promise to answer her questions and we'll do this tonight she is sister Fadia from Wisconsin I hope uh, she said it's okay to use my name and state. I'm glad I, I saw that because I was concerned maybe she would not want me to do that. Uh, but before I answer Sister Fadia's uh, email, again, I want to remind you, we are live. You can call us right now, 1-800-587-9075. Uh, that is the phone number. Um, remember the theme we started last night uh, which is the ruling on celebrating taking part uh, at uh, the non-Muslim holidays, uh, whether by uh, uh, actually uh, uh, joining in uh, the party or joining the party, basically, or um, doing the practices ourselves, uh, or uh, even um, uh, congratulating or greeting um, uh, non-Muslims with respect to their uh, holidays. And we uh, uh, kind of segmented uh, or divided the, the Ummah into three uh, types here. Uh, one type like me and you, uh, uh, if, if, if you belong to that category, 
uh, that we were born as Muslims. Um, uh, we didn't really have any uh, interest uh, in such uh, holidays because uh, we were not brought up uh, even in the environment. Um, I'm talking about brothers who really migrated to the West uh, from um, a majority Muslim land. I, I really didn't know anything about Halloween, Halloween or what's what, I don't know what's the name here, Halloween, Harawin, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, Thanksgiving, I only knew about it in the United States. Uh, Christmas, um, even uh, though right now in, in the Muslim world, it's, it's a little bit different uh, to the times where we were brought up. We're actually the easiest uh, in dealing with this. Because we know straightforward, these are not our, our holidays. Um, we're not going to take part in, in it. We're not even going to, you know, uh, associate ourselves with that because uh, it's crystal clear from Hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he arrived in Medina and he found uh, the Muslims participating in uh, uh, two days uh, of, of, of joy, uh, joyful days, uh, playful days. Uh, this is how Anas actually, uh, radiallahu an, worded uh, the hadith, Yawmani kunna nal'abu fihima. We used to play during these days, have fun. Uh, we used to have a turkey, we used to go around and, and do trigger, uh, uh, trigger uh, treating. Uh, we used to have a Christmas tree, That's the, but uh, during Jahiliyyah, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately said no, no to that. Um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has replaced you uh, with two bitter days, Eid al-Fitri wa Eid al-Adha. Uh, the Eid of al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, those are the only two days uh, you're allowed to uh, uh, to celebrate and uh, because I want to tell you uh, something important that ayad uh, or holidays are normally uh, connected to the belief system of of of, of certain uh, people. Uh, Christmas, for example, they believe that it's uh, you know the, the the birth of the Son of Allah. Wallahu billah. I mean, do we actually believe that? Let me take this call and then we'll go on, inshallah. But please don't lose me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Name. Sheikh? Yeah, name, state, and question, please. Um, uh, Abdul Majid, I'm calling for Virginia. Uh, Brother Abdul Majid from Virginia, and your question tonight, please. Yes, uh, Sheikh, I have a question. Um, uh, my parents are, are not Muslim, and um, they are in the process of, I think they already have a will and, and, and testament, and um, my understanding is that a uh, Muslim can't, cannot inherit from uh, non-Muslims, but then I heard somewhere that um, if the value of the estate wasn't more than one third, uh, that it would be okay. Uh, can you help me with this? Sure, I will, Brother Abdul Majid. Inshallah, I will answer your question. Uh, if you keep watching, normally we take the questions, the first segments of the show, and then after that, I embark on answering the questions. Inshallah, will you be watching, or or, or, or you you're going somewhere? Oh, uh, you know. Uh, I, I won't be able to watch it, but if, if I don't turn off the phone, would I be able to hear the answer? Uh, definitely, but that would be uh, in a while. Uh, you know, Brother Abdul Majid, I will answer in details. You can watch the video later on. But what you have said is actually uh, accurate, that they still can give you as a gift uh, um, as much as third of their uh, uh, property during their lifetime as a gift. This is the solution uh, to this. But the rule stands that uh, a Muslim cannot inherit non-Muslim. And I will shed more light on this, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Inshallah, inshallah. And, and one thing I forgot to mention, I mentioned it very quick, I know it's time is, is tight. 
they mentioned that part of what they wanted to leave me was from an insurance policy. Would I be able to accept from that? Um, you see, that's something that is debatable, but um, um, that money is not lawful for a Muslim to, to have uh, because it's coming from unlawful source. Uh, and this way you have to give it out to charity even so you can receive it, but you cannot use it for yourself. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. May Allah reward you. Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fiqh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi So, Brother Ahmed Majid, inshallah, will try to shed more light on, on your uh, question, uh, especially once it came to insurance. Uh, we'll, we'll shed more light on this. But uh, let me go back to the uh, different segments. We, th we said that there are three segments. Uh, the first segment of the Ummah. Uh, people who do not even feel the pain. I think that's what I'm trying to say, that you do not even feel the pain of not uh, observing these uh, holidays. It's 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 piece of cake. I'm not, I'm not interested. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna like uh, tear uh, my my bed uh, or my pillow because I have not had a turkey on the night of the 27th. Or, you know, it, it's it's irrelevant really. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, name, state, yes, and question. Um, um, I mean, I mean, I'm Mohammed from the Washington D.C. metro area. Yes, um, Mohammed. I have one question. Sure. Uh, for Salah, for me, these past couple of weeks, I've been getting, uh, I've been feeling nervous before every Salah. How how do I stop being nervous from every time what Salah comes? I what? do do I do everything, and then in the Salah time, the time I, I say a lot of my, all my nervousness comes out. What do you mean by nervous? Like you, you just describe for me uh, your your nervousness. Like, what do you what do you do? It's it's, 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 getting, it's getting very worse because um, let's I, I I do the complete wudu. Wud I come out, I get nervous, and then I I lose the wudu because of the nervousness. And for me, when I get nervous, I feel like it's I cannot pray. At all until maybe I get maybe until the, the, the third or fourth time I do or do I feel relaxed then I pray. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, brother Muhammad, yeah. inshallah, I will answer you, but uh, just uh, you know, the way that you're describing this, this is called Wiswas Qahri, uh, that uh, forced uh, whispers of, of uh, on you. Uh, from Satan that should be treated, inshallah. But I will answer you, inshallah, bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Jazakallah oh. khairan. Okay. Uh, so I go back as I take your phone calls, dear viewers, please don't be hesitant to give me a call. I will interrupt my uh, presentation regarding the uh, celebration of non-Muslim holidays um, and the ruling on it and, and how Muslims should uh, act. So that's the first part. Uh, but again, uh, even uh, though, like I said, that uh, the first segment of the Ummah um, you know, they, they, they don't feel the pain of, of not observing these sites, but yet I'm still insisting on educating others regarding uh, uh, how uh, should we, what should we expect as Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Amen. Praying this is Pam from Georgia. Inshallah, sister. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, but I'm glad. I am so happy we're discussing this subject. Yes. Um, you are correct. You have. You are so lucky to have been brought this way in Islam. It's so devastating for people that are reversed. I have lost my whole family. No holidays, no nothing. I don't get to celebrate with my grandson. It's been hard. Right. But, um... I've been told that, that if you give gifts, even if it's not given the cards of, of the Christmas, that it's okay to still give gifts. Right. Because gifts bring people closer together. And as long as you're not celebrating that exact birth of uh, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, um, that, that it's okay to be with your family. Is, is this true? Because I want to do this right, but I've had seven years of. No holidays with my family at all. Right, right. 
Uh, I will answer you, Sister Pam. Inshallah, um, I'm actually coming to uh, that segment of the Ummah. Uh, like I said, uh, we're dividing them to three segments. Uh, I talked already the first segment, which is people like myself. Uh, then the next segment is our children who are born here, um, and they are gradually now being influenced, uh, and how should we handle that? And then actually the third and most difficult segment uh, is people like yourself uh, reverts, and you suffer the most. Um, uh, but I want to remind you, dear sister, that you're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the greater the exactly. the greater the affliction is, the greater the reward is in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, like I said, for people like me, it's it's you know I'm not going to shed tears uh, over uh, missing a turkey or missing a gathering that I was brought up with uh, throughout my life. But people like you would definitely feel loneliness and would feel the pain of that. Uh, but remember, uh, you're doing this for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you tremendously. And I will, uh, I will get into that segment and try to address what should you do, what can you do, uh, and so forth, inshallah. And one more little question to go with that. Um, you know, one time a year they come out with different things that, that do come out for that time of year only. Is it harem to... Like in the grocery store, buy something that you like, but not for that reason. I mean, if they make something in the shape of a Christmas tree, just because it's in the shape of a Christmas tree, is it wrong to buy if it's a goodie that you like? And it, it's hallowed to eat, but the shape is the tree, of course, for Christmas. Right. Those sort of things. I will. I'm not going to cry over a turkey, too. I just cry over missing my grandson and daughter. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely address this, uh, Sister Pam, insha'Allah. Uh, Jazakallah khaira. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're welcome. Barakallah fiki. Uh, please keep calling. I, I'm sorry uh, I missed a couple of calls here, but uh, please uh, go back and, and call us, and I will uh, pick you as I carry on explaining. So. I still insist what I have presented yesterday that applies to the three segments of the Ummah that we have to educate non-Muslims about what we expect because we don't want to upset people while they are experiencing joy nor they are experiencing sorrow. Uh, that's, that's a principle. We should not be harsh. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Aisha from Pennsylvania. Uh, Sister Aisha, what is your question tonight? Um, my question is, there's a lot of um, food products, especially like um, uh, cereals and cakes and candies and stuff, and they have um, natural flavors in them or vanilla extract, and a lot of um, people say that they have alcohol in them, and we're not allowed to eat it because um, like of the hadith that something in a large amount that um, like if it has alcohol, it's even um, in a small amount. My question is, like, are we supposed to um, not eat this stuff, like um, ice cream and candy and stuff that yeah. we have? Let me ask you, sister. Let, let me ask you, sister Aisha. Are we talking about uh, alcohol, real alcohol that would intoxicate if no. you take it in a, a or, or alcohol that has been processed and and somehow yes. extracted? In, in Say. Yes. In processing where they use alcohol, like it's not written on the ingredients, but then um, it might say natural flavors or something. If you call the company, they might know if it has alcohol. Okay. Because a lot of the family gatherings, they use like cakes and stuff, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to eat that because, you know, because of if it has alcohol in it or not. Is that okay. kind of alcohol haram or can we eat it? Um, I will, um, even uh, though I'm not very clear on, 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 what type of alcohol are we talking about? If, if the substance known to us, which is alcohol, uh, is present as an ingredient uh, in that food product, certainly, even if it is um, a, a small, tiny, little thing, uh, it is haram to eat the whole thing. Uh, you quoted the hadith, if a bucket full of it intoxicates, then a sip of it is haram. Uh, but we'll shed more light on that, Sister Aisha, insha'Allah. Jazakallah khaira. Okay. All right. So I'm still uh, 
Uh, uh, here uh, addressing the issues that we should educate non-Muslims about uh, what we expect, the three segments. So the first segment is us, alhamdulillah, we don't, because of the blessing that we were born as Muslims. The second segment here is our children, uh, that we came to this country and then we, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with children. And uh, unfortunately, we did not pay attention um, early enough that we, uh, actually send these children to public schools and um, and to other uh, you know gatherings and we did not pay attention um, uh, once it comes to peer pressure and and they became you know uh, familiar with these holidays assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum salam i'm calling from california i have a question um i just want to know you stopped coming on guidance tv and i was wondering you're gonna be aired on those that channel too, or? Uh, inshallah, uh, very soon, inshallah. It just the time is very limited, uh, and this is um, uh, the only t uh, you know uh, time I have. Um, my schedule is not really working very well with Guidance TV because, you know, I do other work, uh, da'wah work, and 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 for me to try to fit uh, the time. Um, uh, the uh, I'm talking with the brothers. Hopefully, they can accommodate us, inshallah. But uh, for now, that's the uh, the time I'm I'm having and allotting to uh, to answering questions. And uh, certainly, we support God as TV, and we uh, we keep working with them, inshallah. But this is the channel we have for the time being, uh, where you can ask your questions until further notice, inshallah. Okay, okay, I appreciate that. Wa barakallahu <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmed and I'm calling from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Brother Ahmed, your question, please. Yes, uh, the month of Muharram is coming to an end. No. And inshallah, the month of Safar is coming. My question is uh, Is there any particular virtues of the month of Safar? Jazakallah khairan. We'll answer you, inshallah. Barakallah yeah. fiqh. Barakallah fiqh, Brother Muhammad. Assalamu uh, alaikum. So now. Uh, I think once it comes to our children here, um, we just have to navigate. Um, first of all, educate them how to educate their friends, uh, their colleagues um, about uh, their own religion and the fact that they cannot take part uh, in these celebrations. Uh, they cannot exchange greetings because it's against our religion, um, some of these greetings. Um, I mean, especially once it comes to certain holidays, uh, like Christmas, for example. Uh, basically, I don't believe Allah has a son. This is totally out of line uh, as a Muslim. Um, this is an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which I will not condone. Um, uh, Easter, for example, I don't believe that Jesus Christ were crucified, was crucified. That's out of line for me as a Muslim. Um, so for me to go and, 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 and congratulate and greet a non-Muslim uh, who is uh, observing uh, these holidays, uh, I'm simply condoning uh, uh, what he believes, which is totally uh, against my beliefs and actually uh, if I do this knowingly, um, uh, that could take me out of the fold of Islam. Uh, because if, if you're satisfied with the disbelief of others, uh, listen, this has nothing to do with us treating them kindly. This has nothing to do with us uh, trying to be nice and, and, and cool and, and polite in, in addressing them. This is all irrelevant. Uh, th th this is granted. Uh, this has nothing to do with us that we cannot force them to believe in what we believe. Uh, but like they say, tolerance is not in beliefs, tolerance is in the way that we deal with one another. That I do not commit injustice against you, I do not wrong you. Uh, this is what is known in our religion to be bir, acting in love, that I am kind to you, I am nice to you. As long as you are nice to me, as long as you are treating me with respect, I will return that respect. Uh, uh, this is all uh, granted when we say that, uh, so uh, nobody would take my words out of context here. Uh, but certainly um, we have to uh, educate our children about uh, this matter and make sure that uh, they are ready uh, to answer questions. 
uh, equip them with the knowledge uh, which they need to uh, be able to educate non-Muslims uh, about what to expect during this season of holidays and, and so forth. All of the above is needed to be uh, provided uh, to uh, the children, um, to the next generation, uh, especially dear viewers, especially dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, if these kids, these children are uh, 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 basically uh, infested in, in, in the uh, larger community in the United States, meaning uh, they go to public schools, they go to colleges, they go to um, uh, somehow they, uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, they are not uh, in an Islamic school. Uh, they are under the influence of such uh, 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 what is known to be peer pressure. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh Karim Abu Zain, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Uh, Brother Karim, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, may we know your name and state, please? I'm sorry? Uh, would you like to let the viewers know uh, your, your name and state, please? The name, uh, your name and yes. the st uh, It's up to you if you, wanna, if you feel free. What? Go ahead. My name is Sutar Saleh Salman. Saleh Salman. And I'm calling from Fargo, North Dakota. Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, uh, we were just wondering. Uh, of course, we've been we've been listening to you for a long time, and may Allah bless you for everything that we learned from you. <laughs> um, but we we've, we've listened to other um, other ulama like uh, there's one. His name is. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? I'm trying to think of his name. Um, Amran, uh, his name is Amran Hussain. The heard of him, he's from India, I believe. And he always talks about this eschatology, how everything's happening, it's already happened, and things are, like he, according to his knowledge, that things are gonna, like, end up within a couple of years is going to be a uh, month and things are supposed to get really bad. What do you think of that? I mean, is that something that you have listened to? Or have you ever heard of this, this I, brother? I, I will answer you, brother uh, Saleh, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And uh, Jazakallah khairan for your phone call. It's the first time we receive a phone call from uh, North Dakota. Uh, so inshallah, I will definitely uh, answer your questions. Um, regarding this subject. I have heard of that, uh, to answer your question, and I have heard of others actually making such uh, statements. Uh, we will answer it, inshallah, in context, ta'ala. I hope you will be watching, inshallah, um, after 10 o'clock, which actually started now, uh, we will explore these questions, inshallah. Um, Jazakallah khairan, Brother Saleh. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, brother. Wa iyaakum barakallahu feekum. So, um, we come to the last segment here, uh, which is the heartbreaking one, and I, I really feel for the sister who called earlier from Georgia. Um, but remember, ya ukhti, barakallahu feeki, man taraka shay'an lillah, awwadahu allahu khayran min. Whoever abandons something just for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him or her something much better, something much better. Um, we have an issue here that a lot of family get together in the United States in particular happens during these seasons. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Name, state and question please. Uh, my name is Demet, and I'm from Turkey. And your question, please? And my question is, you know, like, Thanksgiving is coming. Sure. So, we not celebrate, but everybody's day off that day. So, we just uh, cooking uh, the turkey, and we eating, is that like the, all right or not? Just, I just ask, when I ask this one. Okay, Jazakallah khairan. We'll, we'll answer that bi ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. Say again one more time, I'm sorry. 
Uh, I will answer you, inshallah, in a minute. Are you going to be watching or you're going to hang up and you, you're watching us on television or, or you, you, you want to get the answer now? So I'm, I'm just listening to you, okay. Okay, I will, I will answer, uh, take in turns, inshallah, and I'll answer your question, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Jazakallahu khairan. You're welcome. So, what can you do, um, especially when you have family get together in the United States only during these days, only? They don't see one another, except on these days, what can you do? Uh, a lot of the scholars, they said, as long as you're not gonna eat pork, you're not gonna participate in their rituals if they do, uh, it is okay to hang around with that intention, just to soften their hearts. I would rather not do it at all. That is actually the ideal thing. Uh, but if this will soften their hearts, uh, there is no exchange of gifts. Uh, if they give you uh, 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 gifts, uh, go ahead and accept it. There is no problem with that. But I would not give them gifts back. I would try to give them gifts on my own holiday which is Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr. Uh, this is again halfway solutions uh, just to accommodate uh, brothers and sisters who do have family ties. And this is the only season uh, where they can uh, uphold these family ties and, and show the excellence of the religion. But in no way I'm telling you, uh, just not to take my words out of context, that you should participate in these celebrations at all. Uh, you should just uh, be around a phone call, uh, just drop by for an hour. How are you doing? How's it going? Good to see everybody. Uh, they tell you Merry Christmas. Oh, good to see you. There is no Merry Christmas back. Good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, you know what? I have that thing. I have to go back. And I, you know, this way you maintain the family ties. Uh, oh, I have this thing for you. So, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. And then don't give them a gift. Give them a gift back. And, and that's how it should be uh, done. This is the scenario that uh, a lot of the uh, scholars condoned. And again, for certain segment of uh, the ummah. Until maybe uh, you do your education uh, to your family that you cannot in the future take part in, in, in these functions and, and you get them to accept that. And that should be your higher goal uh, in the process. So as you're going through this in the process, maybe in a couple of years ta time, uh, you're not gonna uh, take part in such uh, things at all. Tayyib, uh, I promise to answer uh, our dear sister uh, questions, uh, insha'Allah. Uh, let me uh, see here uh, her first uh, question. Uh, insha'Allah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Bi'idhnillahi uh, ta'ala. Okay, uh, Sister Fadia, I believe that's her name. Okay. Okay, her first question is, before starting prayer, we should say an open supplication. Are we supposed to say the supplication uh, when we start every prayer or just open supplication once at the beginning of Fajr uh, time? Okay, our sister is asking regarding Dua al-Istiftah. Uh, we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, that when he uh, simply uh, would start his salah after saying Allahu Akbar, he would uh, say a couple of du'as. Uh, one, two, sometimes three, certain ones at a certain salah, uh, like salat al tahajjud, he would uh, use a certain du'a. Um, uh, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik wa tabarakasmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk. A lot of du'a out there, and, 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 and these du'as are not contradictory. You can actually uh, pick and choose anyone you feel comfortable with, uh, but you should make that dua at the beginning of each salah, at the first rak'ah only after you say Allahu Akbar and before you recite Al-Fatiha. And before you recite Al-Fatiha. So this is the first question of our dear uh, sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum Naam, name, state and question please. 
ما شاء الله فروم علاء فروم اركنسان اركنسا ام سوري اركنسا سوري هاو ار يو برادر علاء هاز ات جوينج الحمد لله هاو ار يو الحمد لله فور اس تونايت I have a question. When a uh, Christian asks a Muslim to pray with them, should we pray with them? A Christian asking a Muslim to pray with them, should you pray with them? Yes, should we or should we not? Absolutely not. And I will answer you in more detail. Jazakallah khaira. But absolute, absolutely not. But refuse it in a respectful, kind way, Brother Ala, not in a mean way. Just explain to them that our religion does not allow us to do this with a smile. Say it with a smile. Jazakallah khaira. Wa alaykum as-salam Okay, the second question, when we uh, rise from ruku'a and before we say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, do we raise uh, uh, saying Allahu Akbar first? or come out of ruku'ah and just say Sami Allahu liman hamida. Okay, when you come back from ruku'ah, uh, you say Sami Allahu liman hamida, and then you raise your hands like this, and then you say Rabbana wa lakal hamd, hamdan tahiran tayyiban mubarakan fi, uh, and there is more. Mil al samawati wa mil al ard wa mil ama shi'ta min shay'in ba'd. أهل الثناء والمجد كلنا أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت Beautiful dua that you can make But the least that you need to do Sister Fadia is سمع الله لمن حمده You raise your hand and then you say ربنا ولك الحمد حمدا طاهرا طيبا مباركا فيه uh, the, the least You can add the others Then you place your hands down and you say الله أكبر and then you go down uh, to sujood. Jazakallahu uh, khaira. Is the dua Allahumma uh, Allahumma ijma'ni min, ad, min ashab uh, Okay, and also to say it seven times after the Fajr and Maghrib prayers before uh, take, uh, talking to anyone. I don't know what this dua, Allahumma jma'ni min adha, min adhab al-nar. Oh, Allahumma, Allahumma uh, uh, protect me from adhab al-nar. Saying it seven times after the salah, never been established, dear sister. The dua regarding uh, seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the four things, uh, the punishment in the grave, the punishment in the hellfire, uh, the fitna of life and death, and the fitna of the Antichrist, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to do them after we finish the tashahud in the final jalsa and before, and before the taslim. And before the taslim. That's when uh, we say it. Tayyib. Let's go to uh, Brother Abdul Majid from Virginia. Uh, he is our first caller tonight. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, he is a non-Muslim. Uh, he has a non-Muslim parents. Uh, now he cannot. Al-Muslim la yarithul kafir. The Muslim cannot inherit from a non-Muslim. Now the solution that the parent would give you what they want as a gift during their lifetime, um, as much as even so you mentioned third, but they can give you as much as they want because it's a non-Muslim anyways. Um, but now, if you know that the source of their income is from a lawful means, such as a life insurance policy, you are entitled to take this money, but not to use it, but not to use it. Send it to uh, uh, charity. And uh, I wanna, uh, subhanAllah, uh, a situation that happened out of this world, a sister called and uh, uh, her uh, non-Muslim, uh, friend passed away and she wrote her name just to show you that if <laughs> you know so it's amazing the, the things are amazing sometimes I mean, she wrote her the beneficiary of her life insurance <laughs> imagine that <laughs> she is the sole beneficiary of her life insurance policy and and she receiving uh, money and I actually answered her with the same thing that she needs to deposit that money towards uh, and the sister, mashallah, she will do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward our sister. She is from Missouri. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her and bless her family. 
and uh, keep her uh, in the best of health and iman. طيب we go to brother Muhammad from Virginia. Uh, I'm sorry, from uh, the Washington Metropolitan. Uh, normally, Virginia, Maryland, and Washington D.C. is a tri-state here, like uh, New Jersey. What else here? New Jersey, New York. What is the other one? Ka uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, like it's it's a similar thing. So, well, the question here, uh, our brother Muhammad is having. It seems to me from the way that he is speaking. Uh, nervousness which leads you that you have to repeat your wudu more than one time because you're doubting this is called wiswas qahri uh, uh, unwillingly uh, uh, being whispered to or you these these thoughts uh, are being forced uh, on you uh, by satan brother muhammad you're not the only person uh, who experiences this this is a bala this is a test from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you but listen to me, my dear brother. Regardless of how much these whispers are, please do not obey them. Please, if you made wudu one time, you're certain that wudu is good, don't listen to shaitan. Just go on and pray. When you're about to open and, 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 and pray, say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim every time shaitan attacks you with these thoughts. Uh, and even use the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you spit without dry spit. It's called the taft. An yasari, you do that three times to your left, and you say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Use the adhkar uh, uh, when uh, you wake up from sleep and when you um, you go to sleep. Uh, use the adhkar when you enter the bathroom, when you begin your wudu, when you finish your wudu. If you just keep engaging uh, yourself uh, in these uh, designated uh, uh, words of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely Allah will help you through and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from such whispers. Uh, we make dua for you, brother Muhammad, but uh, uh, listen, my dear brother, you're not the only one out there. Uh, uh, we receive these questions all the time. Uh, be patient, but don't uh, give in uh, to shaitan. Um, uh, we answer Sister Pam uh, from uh, uh, Georgia. Be uh, patient, ya uh, I would not recommend, and I would answer her and our sister who called from uh, Turkey. Uh, she is uh, from Turkey and she's asking about having a turkey on Thanksgiving. Um, both uh, the sister Pam is saying, can I just get some uh, thing that looks like a Christmas tree? Ukhti, don't do this. You're just punishing yourself more. Just enjoy the spirit of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will bring more joy into your heart uh, that here I am submitting to you. Here I am not trying to, uh, uh, you know, when we said that, stop by and, and, and say hi, how you doing? Good to see you, family member. I miss everybody and I have to go. This is for a cause, this is for a reason. But us uh, craving uh, for stuff which belongs to Jahiliyyah uh, is not an attribute of a believer. Um, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that there are three signs uh, which would indicate uh, that a person has definitely uh, tasted the sweetness of faith. Uh, one of them uh, that you hate to go back to your former uh, condition uh, of, of, of lifestyle like you hate to be thrown in hell. I, I love being a Muslim. I am proud to be a Muslim obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the attitude that we should develop. Uh, but having halfway solutions, cooking a turkey, yeah, I'm a Muslim, I'm not going to celebrate, but let me, no. Uh, you can go ahead and, 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 and cook, but uh, that tradition uh, uh, of cooking a turkey is associated with a certain celebration is not Islamic. I should not be doing it on this day, nor I should bring my family up to celebrate that or to live that. I want them to live a life of a Muslim, a life of a Muslimah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Okay, uh, our sister Aisha, I think we, uh, we answered her um, uh, regarding the, uh, the um, uh, ingredients. Uh, I, I really wasn't very uh, clear on 
uh, you know, uh, on, on what she meant by little bit and, and much uh, of, 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 of alcohol. But listen, if there is a little bit of uh, alcohol in any substance, food product, definitely it is haram to eat or drink uh, because like you quoted the hadith dear sister uh, muskir, uh, muskir fa haram. if uh, a bucket full of it uh, intoxicates then uh, a sip of it is haram okay i'm trying to get some uh, information here on uh, trying to get some uh, uh, emails here that I received on Facebook as well. That's why I'm, I'm consumed here uh, with the, the internet. Okay, uh, I think our brother here uh, given us something. Uh, recently, one of the sheikhs said that celebrating wedding anniversary is a bid'ah. And therefore, there is not haram uh, in, in celebrating it. it. In fact, it is a sign of love. Uh, towards the spouse. I'm totally confused now, Sheikh. Can you please explain it? I trust your knowledge. Uh, Jazakallah khairan. This is Brother Asif. Uh, well, I really appreciate the fact that you trust my knowledge. Uh, but I am sorry to tell you that Sheikh who told you that uh, is right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we really, you know, uh, 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 I'm sorry, we, we, don't, we don't have uh, anything that's called anniversary. Uh, I think is, is, is uh, uh, you know, it is sad to try to sum up our duties towards our parents, towards our, our father, towards our mothers, towards our wives, towards our husbands, in one day. I think, I think we're not getting it. You know, it is so sad, uh, Brother Asif, when I see a Muslim doing like non-Muslims, being abusive and dutiful to parents throughout the year, and then the brother or the sister, they come on a Mother's Day or Father's Day, they buy uh, a bucket of flowers, and I have meal and a gift. And that's, uh, that's it. Come on, that's not dutifulness towards the parents. Our spouses have rights upon us. And these rights are not just to be fulfilled in our anniversary. Uh, listen, you can mention it, that we met on that day and it was fun. But celebrating or celebrations um, has to, to do with, 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 with believing in something. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can mention it to them. Uh, you can have your own little fun on that day together. There is nobody said that you cannot do it. Uh, but to have an anniversary and, and a party and a get together and all of that, we should not do this, Brother Asif. And also we should not uh, minimize our uh, love uh, towards our spouse to be uh, one uh, day. Uh, our brother is, is mentioning uh, regarding uh, Shahar Safar, uh, our brother who called from Toronto, uh, Brother ah uh, Ahmed. Shahar uh, Safar is a month where actually ab people abuse with um, uh, almonds. They, they believe that bad things happen in this month. And this is from Jahiliya. Uh, we should not be practicing this at all. Uh, but, you know, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that uh, in any month we can at least observe three days of fasting. The 13th, the 14th, the 15th, we call them the white days. Fasting Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, keep up with the ibadah, insha'Allah, Brother Ahmed. Uh, but don't entertain these uh, awful uh, practices. Uh, we still have two more questions, uh, insha'Allah. Uh, 
uh, our brother uh, Salih Salman uh, from North uh, Dakota, Jazahullah uh, Khaira. Um, I'm not going to talk about names. I'm going to talk about facts. Anyone, dear brother, dear sister in Islam, tells you that the world is going to end and these events are these uh, signs which indicate the end of this world or whatever is happening right now uh, are indications of the fierce battle which uh, the West referred to to be Armageddon and our messenger called it Al Malhama, the fierce uh, killing, uh, is someone who does not uh, really and uh, I hope this is not to be understood that we're, we're trying to be attacking one another here. I, I don't condone uh, you know, any attacks against anybody. I, I, I totally believe uh, that um, you know, we all have shortcomings, including myself. We ask Allah to forgive me. Uh, but the subject we're talking about here, here is a subject of aqidah, uh, the belief system. Min aqidatina, it's from our belief system that you don't claim that you know the unseen. Uh, why brother Saleh going to a fortune teller or a sorcerer is uh, a red zone in our religion? Why? Uh, we actually have two hadith. Man ata arrafan. If you just go without believing him, uh, your salah will not be accepted for 40 days. And you still have to pray, by the way. So you don't say that, oh, it's not going to be accepted, then I don't have to pray. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Naam. Sheikh, this is Asif calling from Vancouver, Canada. Brother Asif, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Thanks for uh, answering my question. But Jazakallah khairan. I appreciate you uh, making that statement, and I'm sorry I disappointed you. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Sheikh, I have another question. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, Sheikh, it's, um, it's recommended to recite Surah Kahf, right? Um, every Friday? Correct. Um, so I have a question. If someone recites Surah Kahf, Instead of um, reciting, you know, using mushaf or something like that, or maybe tablet or whatever, if someone recites Surah uh, Kahf in the night prayer, does it fulfill that thing? I mean, do do the um, I got you. Is it it's still necessary to recite Surah Kahf through mushaf, or does it fulfill that thing? I got you. I got you. Jazak. We'll answer you, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallahu feek. That's a very Thank good you. question. Jazakallah. Well, we'll answer you, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Um, so I go back to my brother uh, Saleh Salman. Um, um, why? We said we have two hadith regarding uh, um, visiting a fortune teller. Um, just visiting without believing. Your salah is not accepted for 40 days. And the second hadith, uh, if you believe him or her, Guess what? You have disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? I want you to understand why, dear viewers. Why? Because that person claims that he knows the unseen. That he can tell you tomorrow, this is what will happen. And Allah subhanahu wa taala made it crystal clear. Allah subhanahu wa taala made it crystal clear. Alimul ghaybi, that he is the knower of the unseen. لا يظهر على غيبه أحدا. He will not let anyone uh, get the knowledge of that unseen, and then comes in the exception. إلا من ارتضى من رسول. Accept a messenger, like Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم given us certain signs, certain signs. Uh, so now, uh, a lot of these events which we see happening. In the world, as we speak, Brother Saleh, they happened before, and before, and before. They happened during Salahuddin. The Muslim world was completely occupied by the Crusaders. Uh, anyone in his sound mind would think uh, that this is the Malhama right there. And it happened during the Tatar, uh, when the Magul 
uh, the people, subhanAllah, who attacked the Muslim world and they became Muslims themselves, um, uh, attacked during the time of, of Ibn Taymiyyah and, 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 and that era. Uh, the Fatimites. And for, I want to say is, you could say, you know what? These events indicate something, they mean something. But to be certain, prepare yourselves, it's two years and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, um, it's not my habit to, to go after any learned person. Uh, I don't. But once it comes to the area of the belief system, the area of the aqidah, and you, and, you, and, you, and you speak like this, I tell you I'm sorry, uh, go get some ABC uh, uh, aqidah. If you study ABC aqidah, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you will never make that statement. You will never uh, 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 commit that, uh, uh, that, that, that um, uh, misguidance, misguiding people. Uh, and it's very sad when you see uh, people who are, um, you know, uh, well-known. Uh, they have followers, uh, they have YouTube uh, videos, they have uh, uh, people who watch them. Uh, you end up misguiding uh, people. Al-ghayb, um, the unseen, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is it. I could speculate. I could say, you know what? What is happening in Syria right now in Iraq uh, may indicate something. But to be definite, to say this is what's happening and then this will happen and then this will happen and, and you're creating scenarios, uh, uh, never do that. Never uh, do that. Brother Ala from Arkansas, please, Brother Ala, never do this. Uh, Christians, they pray in the name of a deity, a created being, Jesus, peace be upon him, the Messenger of Allah, whom we love and respect. Uh, dearly, uh, but now uh, you uh, joining hands with them and praying in Jesus' name, had a shirk, you're committing shirk. But again, Brother Ala, like I said, uh, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to expound more on that question, but my time is running out, and I still would like to answer Brother Asif's question here. Uh, really, Brother Ala, uh, you shouldn't do it, but again, refuse in a kind, nice, polite uh, manner. Uh, Brother Asif, Jazahullah Khaira, reciting it in tahajjud will do. Uh, Surah Al-Kahf, if you reflect upon it, um, if you reflect upon the uh, meanings of the Surah, uh, could do it for you, uh, inshallah. Uh, it was a busy show tonight, I have to say. I mean, here I am, it's already 10.30, and I think I was busy. All right, I guess it's time to sign off, everybody. Uh, it's time to go to sleep so that you wake up and, and, uh, and carry on with your lives, uh, beginning with, uh, inshallah, a couple of rakahs. Don't forget a couple of rakahs before Fajr, huh? and then Witr, and then don't forget uh, Fajr on time. Uh, and tomorrow is what, Thursday? Hey, if you're not a resident, if you're not a traveler, I'm going to be a traveler myself, so I'm not asking you to do something that I will not do. I will be, inshallah, flying tomorrow to ta'ala by the permission of Allah to Denver to spend the weekend there uh, ta'ala with the community. And uh, uh, so I will be traveling, but if you're a resident, I think tomorrow is a good day to fast. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, whatever I said right today is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever I said wrong is from myself and shaitan and please don't hesitate to correct me uh, just provide the evidence I will come back on the air and declare it that I was wrong and here is the evidence قال الله قال رسول الله and here is the right thing uh, till the next edition of uh, let's talk about it uh, which will come on Monday with our uh, beloved uh, Sheikh Akasha uh, Insha'Allah, uh, we leave you in the care of Allah. Uh, until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.